Welcome back. This is Data Engineering Zoom Cam Week 5. And in this video, I want to talk about the map partition function on Spark RDDs. So in the previous video, we talked about what RDDs is and how they are related to data frames. And one of the things we did, we implemented one of the group by queries from the previous videos uh, with RDDs with using basic operations like filter, map and reduce. I actually have it here. Uh, this is what we did in the previous video. And in this video, I want to talk about one operation that is called map partition. So RDDs have this map partition. And this is operation similar to map. Map gets in an RDD and it is applied to every element of this RDD. And for every element, it produces another element and creates another RDD. So what map partition is doing? It gets a partition and then it produces another partition. The input is an RDD and output is another RDD. And we take an entire partition, entire chunk of data. We apply some function to this chunk of data and we output the result. This is quite convenient because let's say we have a large data set with some data. And I don't know, this data set is one terabyte and we don't have a machine that has that amount of memory. But let's say our partitions are 100 max each and then we can apply this map partition, process this data, create another partition with process data, we effectively chunk our data set and uh, process it separately. And this is quite convenient for many applications and most notably machine learning. This operation here that we have in this transformation can be applying a machine learning model for doing some predictions. So all we need to do is have our machine learning model, put this inside a map partition function, and then a Spark will chunk a big data set for us into smaller things and apply this function to each partition and then it will combine the results and save the results to a data lake. And the example I want to use here is let me again take a look at the green data set. So in the green data set, we have some information and we have this uh, pickup date time and drop off date time. And imagine we want to create an application, a service that predicts the duration of a trip. We can use machine learning for that. And the things we will need for this service is vendor ID. Maybe some vendors are faster than others. And then we will need pickup time. So depending on when exactly a passenger picked up, if it's uh, midnight, then it's probably faster than if it's during rush hour. Then we need location ID, a pickup location ID and drop off location ID. Of course, the longer they are from each other, the longer it takes. And we have another field, which is trip distance. So again, the longer the distance, the longer it takes to travel. So we need this information. So call this columns. So we select these columns. Let me do show. Yeah, it should be a list, of course. And um, this is the information we have. So we have vendor ID, pickup time. We're mostly interested in our, right? And then pick up location, drop off location, and then the distance. And let's say we have a machine learning model and we want to apply this model to this data set. I will now turn this thing into an RDD because I want to apply, use this approach. So I want to use Spark for chunking our data set and then applying our model to each chunk of the data. So I'll have this RDD, I'll call it duration RDD. And this is our RDD. So I already did some filtering. What happens often in practice that I might have some SQL here that would do all the pre-processing. And here I would have all the important information, already prepared information that I would then feed to the model. So this is how our duration RDD looks like. Uh, let me do take five. And now we want to apply a model. For applying the model, I will have something like apply model in batch and batch is probably a good term here because we're talking about batch processing. Yeah, what we have here is we have a partition. So this is something that we will actually put inside this map partition. Before we apply a model, I just want to show you how it looks like. So let's say I want to return something here. So I'll return one. If I do now collect, collect is something we didn't talk about, but it collects all the elements of RDD and returns this as a Python list. It says there is an error, int object is not iterable. This thing needs to return something that is iterable, it needs to return a sequence. So let me return a list with just one. And when I apply it, 
I get a list with four ones. It means that there are four partitions and it applies this apply model in batch to each partition and then it returns this one and then what it does it flattens it into this list and by flattening I mean it returns something like this then another one returns this another one another one so we actually have this as a result and then it removes this nestedness and returns a list like that so it flattens the list yeah we have that what we can do is maybe count how many rows we have in each partition for example let's see if we can use this length function so call it uh, cnt short for count and then execute it this partition is actually not a Python list. So it says that it's an object of type iter tools chain. This is an iterator. It means that we cannot just do length, but what we can do is execute a for loop on this partition. So let's do something like for row in partition. And then, so count will be zero. And then I can do count equals count plus one. And then at the end, just return this count. Let me execute that. And so this will probably take a bit of time because it needs to actually go through each record of each partition, then collect all these counts and return. Yeah, we see that our partitions are not super balanced. So this partition is very large. It contains 1,100,000 records and this is three times smaller and this is uh, even smaller than these two. Our partitions are not super balanced, which might not always be a good thing because this one will be processed quite fast. This one's um, a bit slower, but this one will take some time. So other executors will finish processing and uh, the first executor will still process. So others will need to wait. So this is not a good thing. To avoid this, we could do repartitioning, but then repartitioning is an expensive operation. Let's not talk about this right now. This is something I guess you will need to learn how to deal with this in practice. Okay, now we're getting a bit closer to what we want to do. Now I want to turn this partition into a pandas data frame. Usually as a data scientist, I like pandas data frames and uh, the models I have usually expect a pandas data frame. So let me import pandas, I can do pandas. Let me show it to you here. So I do duration RDD take 10 and it will return a bunch of rows. So this is how these rows look like. And if I now do pandas data frame and put these rows, it will actually create a pandas data frame with all these rows. And you see it doesn't know what the columns are. So we need to tell it that the columns are columns. We conveniently created this columns variable here. And if I do now, if I execute this, we have this data frame, pandas data frame with all this information. So it's quite easy to turn a bunch of rows from Spark to a pandas data frame. Let me actually copy this thing and I will put it here. Maybe I'll call it rows instead of partitions and this will be our data frame. And let's still do count. So I'll do count and then for this data frame, I can just look at the length of this data frame and let me execute this. While it's executing, I want to add a caveat here. So this thing actually materializes the entire data frame in uh, memory. Your executors need to have enough memory. If it happens that your executors maybe don't have a lot of memory, you will need to repartition it or do some chunking of these rows or something like this. But let's see what the error is. Five columns passed, um, but uh, data has three columns. Yeah, the reason is, uh, so I apply this on RDD instead of applying this on duration RDD. Okay, so now let me execute this. Now it creates a data frame now with uh, just five columns, not three. So three was the RDD we used in the previous video. Yeah, and again, it returns the same result. Here it puts the entire partition into a data frame, which is not always good. So if you want to solve it, there is a package called iter tools in Python. And in, the, in iter tools, you can use slicing. You can slice iterators. This way you can break these big partitions into sub partitions of size 100,000, for example, and then process them separately. But I will not do this now. This is just a remark if you ever need to do something like this in the future. But yeah, we were actually talking about machine learning. We have our data frame and now we want to apply a model for predicting the trip duration. I'll just create a function model predict we get a data frame and yeah let's say we have some model here 
right? And what we usually do is model dot predict and pass a data frame here, and the result is y pred, which is predicted value. And if this model predicts the duration of the trip, then this y pred contains the predictions for each row of this data frame. Now, we do not have a model here. Let's pretend we do, and our model will be something super simple. It will, for each mile in the trip, it will, let's say, I don't know, five minutes per mile is a reasonable estimate or not. I do not know. I don't even know how much a mile is, uh, but uh, let's go with that. So then this will be our fancy machine learning model that just for each mile in the distance, it counts five minutes. So this is our machine learning model. So now we'll have our predictions here that we do in our map partition function. And now the predictions, this is an array with predictions and each element of this array is a prediction for a respective column of this data frame. What we can do now is we can create a new column in our data frame that we created here. And we can say predicted duration or expected duration. And we can just put this back. And now we can output this data frame as the result. Of course, this will not work. So we need to output each element of the data frame. And for that purpose in Pandas, there is a thing called intervals. We can maybe show you. So we have these rows, right? And if I do Pandas data frame rows and then call it data frame and data frame iter tuples. Yeah, it is an iterator. So we cannot see it immediately. I will need to materialize it, use list. And yeah, so if I have columns here, so it will look like that for each row. It will have a tuple that will contain everything that we have in this row. It will also add this index field. Yeah, we can just ignore for now. Yeah, let me remove that. And so this is an iterable. It means that we can run a for loop on it. So I can do for row in iter tuples. And then I can use this yield keyword. So I will output each row of this thing. And uh, if you don't know what this yield is doing, let me show you. I will write a simple function that will, let's say, return an infinite sequence of numbers. So it will be a, an infinite loop and it will return the value of um, this variable. So it will yield the value. So it will, we will return this and then we will increment this. So i plus one. So what will happen here is it will return a value, then increment this, return again, increment, return again, and increment. And the result of this thing is a sequence. So let me do sequence, infinite sequence. And when we look at this, it says it's a generator. So it generates these values. If I do now a list like this, if I try to materialize it, I will run out of memory because this is an infinite sequence. And but what I can do is I can just do next and get the next element, then the next element, the next element, the next element, and so on. And if I do a for loop here, so for example, I can do for e in sequence, print i. Of course, it is an infinite sequence, so it will this for loop will never finish. That's why let me add a break statement. So let's say if i is bigger than 10, I want to break. And then it starts with five because we already executed it multiple times. And then, yeah, it outputs everything. Yeah, what if we modified it? Let's say if i is more than 15, then break. Then this is no longer infinite sequence and I can actually materialize it. See, it becomes a finite sequence. And this is what Spark uses here. So it will write each row to the resulting RTD and then it will flatten it. In the end, we will have all these rows from these data frames combined together from all the partitions. Okay, let me now execute this. I don't want to collect now because it will collect all these values. So what I will do is I'll just maybe do take 10. So I will take the first 10 elements of the RDD. Um, but what happens right now, it actually applies this model to all the partitions and then just takes 10 of them. Yeah, this is what we have. We have this pandas uh, thing. And now we can maybe turn this back into data frame and do something like show. I will not specify the schema here. Ideally, I should. The first part tried to infer the schema. That's why it would run something. And then only then it will turn this into a data frame and then we do show. 
but I see something that something is wrong so maybe I was too fast to do this so let me see what is wrong so I'll take five values here no it's actually fine I don't know what is uh, wrong with this let me create data frame data frame result or predictions I'll do something like this yeah, so this index thing will appear in the data frame as well. So I want to do something like a drop index. So I don't want to have this column. Yeah, now because I don't specify the schema, it is trying to infer it. And then let me do show again. Now I don't know what this daytime, I don't know why it's an empty list, but these are our predictions. And now let's say I just want to select this predicted duration. You can do that as well. And we see the predictions for each row of our data frame. We can predict the duration in minutes. And this is something we can show to the passengers to know how long a trip will take. Well, of course, uh, like for this use case, it actually should happen in real time. We don't need Spark for that. So in real life, we would have a service. And then passengers with their mobile phone will send a request to this service and the service will reply with duration so it will contain all this information that we have and the, the reply will be expected duration is 20 minutes but just for the sake of example here we did this in spark for this particular use case you probably wouldn't use spark you would use a web service but just to show you how i usually use map partition in practice i came up with this example so i hope it was useful it was a good illustration of how you can use map partition and it made sense even though it was uh, maybe not a very well thought through example and actually this concludes our small section of spark internals and rdds and see you soon.